<laughs> sapphire? What do you mean, sapphire? Well, sir, it's all the rage right now. It's more scratch resistant than the mineral in our watches. Uh, mineral? Hard legs. Sorry, boss. But maybe a training for heaven's sake. If the public catches on, I might have to settle for that 200 foot yacht next year. Yes, boss. Sorry, boss. So, how would this so-called sapphire impact our profitability? Well, to be honest, sir, it's only a fraction more expensive per unit than mineral. I mean, hard legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I know you went to state school, but even by your standards, lowering margins. That's pretty moronic. And there's me thinking you might actually be giving me a good proposition for once. Narrowing margins. <laughs> what next? Micro adjustment holes. <laughs> Sir, can we use it as a marketing tool to charge more for our watches? After all, aren't we supposed to be raising our prices to look a bit more upmarket? Well, yeah, that is true. Wait a second. How about we increase the price without changing the crystal? <laughs> Uh, won't the community complain? Oh, if anyone asks, just tell them it's more shatterproof. The fanboys, they'll eat that one up. Well, we could always fall back on the whole pandemic supply thing. Pretend it's a shortage or inflation or something like that. <laughs> now go on, see to it. <laughs> okay, perhaps that's not entirely realistic. Nevertheless, Seiko does have a habit of restricting the best materials for only their most premium watches. How can they get away with this when other brands are seemingly in a race to the bottom, attempting to cram the highest specs into the cheapest possible package? Well, I figured I'd take a look at a new watch that does a pretty good job of answering that question. What I've got here is no ordinary Seiko Presage cocktail time. Courtesy of Watch Shop, the UK's largest watch dealer, I've managed to get hold of the freshly released version, which comes in at 39.5 millimeters. One millimeter smaller than the original range. It's nicknamed the aviation for some reason, though I can't see many similarities between this and most pilot star watches. It's affiliate linked in the video description nonetheless if you want to check it out. Interestingly, there's also a selection of even smaller 38.5 millimeter models released not too long ago though those do have somewhat of a different look. This semi-premium Seiko product line normally hovers between about $300 and $600, depending on your chosen model, of course, as well as inflation. For such a cost, this presage isn't particularly impressive on paper. While the watch is made of the industry standard 316L stainless steel, used in most pieces from about $60 and upwards, it's also only sported a mineral crystal, which you'd also expect to find on much lower end watches. Powering the presage is only the entry-level Seiko 4R35 movement. I say entry level, it's more like entry slash bordering on mid-tier perhaps. This is essentially a branded version of the popular NH35 intended for usage only in mainline Seiko watches. And while it performs admirably, it's hardly a cracking deal. You can find the near identical NH35 in the likes of the sub $100 Invicta Pro Diver. In fact, when specs alone are considered, the Invicta looks like a proper bargain in comparison. In some further aspects, the case for this Seiko doesn't improve. The basic case polishing here is only equivalent to lower cost watches like the Orient Bambino, and it doesn't even integrate with a predominantly brushed bracelet particularly well. The bracelet itself is thankfully better quality than those fitted to lower tier Seiko 5s. Still, even this has a rudimentary butterfly clasp with no micro adjustment holes, meaning you can only alter the watch in large link sized increments. Even the water resistance is only mediocre at 5 bar. So considering all this, who the f*** would buy this watch? I mean, this deal sounds as palatable as porcupine soup. Well, it's time for Seiko to release the Kraken. Indeed, they have a secret weapon that allows them to leapfrog the majority of comparably specced or similarly priced competition. All will be revealed after this message from my secret source, Watch Crunch. Yeah, Watch Crunch is like the ultimate watch nerds paradise, essentially a cheat code for content creators like me. It's not only packed to the brim with content, including polls, reviews, discussions, and news stories, all of which you can have your say on, but it's also a great escape from the algorithm-fueled vanity propagated by platforms like Instagram and Facebook. 
On WatchCrunch, you can proudly embrace your inner geek. And unlike other sites, you don't need a six-figure collection to join the community. Instead, you can follow your preferred brands or topics using hashtags and sort your main feed in four different ways, meaning you can view what you want, not what predatory advertisers or algorithms force you to see. The WatchCrunch feature set is constantly expanding. I even got invited to a meetup the other week. You can now organize your own event using the modern intuitive interface. The whole thing makes most forums look like they were created with Windows 98. There's no sign up fee, so come join me using the link in the video description. Okay, back to Seiko. Now their real forte in recent years has been dials. More specifically, their mastery of dial texture. I first encountered this with the surprisingly elaborate Seiko 5 SNK361 a year or two back, which had an array of microscopic crests across the surface. This was pretty impressive for such an affordable timepiece, and I'm sure you've already seen the wonderfully crafted Grand Seikos at the opposite end of the price spectrum. Some of those are genuinely astounding. What I'm getting at is that Seiko really is the class leader in this element at pretty much every price point. And this is evident once more with the Presage lineup. The best known cocktail time models continue to receive acclaim for their exuberant dials, which have a distinctive kaleidoscope-like quality thanks to the beams of color protruding from the center. This alone makes the cocktail time look more sophisticated than many rivals in substantially higher price brackets, which is why I think it's seen such adoption from collectors. The subsequent follow-ups each look a bit different. The 38 and a half millimeter model I mentioned earlier has more of a floral pattern, which on line at least doesn't look nearly as inspiring. Perhaps it looks better in person though I can't say for sure. What I can say is that this 39 and a half millimeter version is a real looker. The brown Irish coffee version is actually what inspired this video, as when my wife and I saw it online, we immediately wanted to take a look at it. It looked really classy and like nothing I'd tried before. I reached out to Watch Shop, but unfortunately they didn't have stock to give me access to that one. I was able to get hold of this blue version though, and honestly, it's not a bad backup. At a distance, you'll notice this dial is more understated than some of the previous alternatives, with no bold patterns in play. That being said, it keeps improving the closer you get. At a macro level, sits an abundance of interlocking ribs, which combine to create a subtler version of the sunburst lines found on the larger model. When you rotate the watch on wrist, especially in sunlight, the result is nothing short of spectacular. Bolstered by the beautiful gradation from a punchy inner color to a darker hue at the circumference, adding an extra dimension akin to a carefully crafted watercolor painting. The high shine markers are nothing out of the ordinary and look decent enough to not hold the aesthetic back, though they don't offer any luminescence whatsoever. Like the Orient Star Classic, the hands of this Seiko do add to the allure, boasting a half polished, half frosted finish that looks premium and surprisingly aids visibility too. Unlike those with the singular finishing type, which tend to blend into the background in certain lighting conditions, half of these dual finished pointers will almost always offer clear reading, which I find especially advantageous for a slimmed down handset like this. I'd love to see this method become standard for mid tier watches, as it has no downsides outside of cost. There's a dark date window at three, which blends in quite well, though perhaps a no date version would have been a wiser choice for a dressier watch that won't see everyday usage. The extra symmetry could have only added to the beauty. Similar logic may apply to the dial text, as I see no reason to have both presage and automatic together. I think anyone purchasing this watch will already know it's an automatic presage. There's no need to remind them every time you look down. One line or the other would have sufficiently offset the logo at the top center. Still, I reckon this is comfortably the best dial available for under $500 on the market right now, though I'm more than open to your suggestions in the comments. Anything that compares to this must be damn impressive in its own right. With the cleaner peripherals and slashed sizing, this newer option suits a wider variety of wrists and scenarios than its predecessors, especially in this vivid sporty blue color, which looks great in summer. Smaller wristed folk can get away with this thanks to the short lug to lug, while the larger wristed of you can probably squeeze into this without it looking quite as cartoonish as a 38 mm or smaller option might look. It's also fairly slim, which is a must for a sleek dress watch, right? And you see, this finesse is why Seiko can charge more than the better spec Sam Martins or Pagani Designs and others out there. Those options might have higher water resistance, a better crystal, a better band, and maybe even improved finishing, but they just don't look like this. They don't feel like a piece of art on your wrist, and especially for dress watches like this Presage, that's all that truly matters. Heck, I really like the new 38mm Orient Bambino that I reviewed the other week, and despite both being great to look at and seeming similar on paper, this downsized Presage does a sterling job of commanding that increased RRP. It's undoubtedly unlucky timing for Orient. I wonder if this release will steal their thunder at least to some extent. If you're on a budget, I'd still check out that video which is on screen now, but if you prefer the Presage, it's linked in this video's description. 